The man sipped his toquet. His demon was lying on her front, head up, front paws stretched out ahead of her, like the picture of the Sphinx in Malcolm's encyclopedia. The black and silver patterns on her back seemed to flicker and shimmer for a moment, and Malcolm felt as if the spangled ring had changed its form and become a demon. But then Lord Asriel spoke suddenly. Do you know why I haven't been to see my daughter? I thought you were busy. You probably had important things to do. I haven't been to see her, because if I do, she'll be taken away from there and put in a much less congenial place. There'll be no Sister Benedicta to stand up for her there, but now they're trying to take her away anyway. And what was that other thing I've heard about? The League of St. Alexander? Malcolm told him about that. Disgusting, said Asriel. There's plenty of kids in my school joined. They like being able to wear a badge and, and tell the teachers what to do. Excuse me, sir, but I told Dr. Ralph about all this. Didn't she tell you? Still not quite sure about me. Well, no, said Malcolm. Don't blame you. You're going to go on visiting Dr. Ralph? Yes, because she lends me books as well as listening to what's happened. Does she? Good for her. But tell me, the baby, is she being well looked after? Oh, yes. Sister Fenella, she loves her like... He was going to say like I do, but thought better of it. She loves her a lot. They all do. She's very happy. Lyra, I mean. She talks to her demon all the time, just jabber, 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 and he jabbers back. Sister Fenella says they're teaching each other to talk. Does she eat properly? Does she laugh? Is she active and, and curious? Oh, yeah. The nuns are being really good to her. But now they're being threatened. Asriel got up and went to the window to look at the few lights from the priory across the river. Seems like it, sir. I mean, your lordship. So will do. Do you think they'd let me see her? The nuns? Not if the Lord Chancellor had told them not to. And he has, eh? I couldn't say, sir. What I think is they'd do anything to protect her, especially Sister Benedicta. If they thought anyone or, or anything was a danger to her, they'd... Well, I suppose they'd do anything, like I said. So you know them well, these nuns? I've known them all my life, sir. And they'd listen to you? I suppose they would, yes. Could you tell them I'm here and I'd like to see my daughter? When? Right now. I'm being pursued. The High Court has ordered me not to go within 50 miles of her. And if I'm found here, they'll take her away and put her somewhere else where they aren't so careful. Malcolm was torn between saying, Well, you ought not to risk it then. And simple admiration and understanding. Of course the man would want to see his daughter, and it was wicked to try and prevent him. Well, Malcolm thought hard and said, I don't think you could see her right now, sir. They go to bed ever so early. I wouldn't be surprised if they were all fast asleep now. In the morning, they get up ever so early too. Maybe I haven't got that long. Which room have they made into a nursery? Round the other side, sir, facing the orchard. Which floor? All their bedrooms are on the ground floor, and hers is too. And you know which one. Yes, I do, but you could show me then. Come on. There was no refusing this man. Malcolm led him out of the terrace room and along the corridor, and out onto the terrace before his father could see them. He closed the door very quietly behind them, and found the garden brilliantly lit by the clearest full moon there'd been for months. It felt as if they were being lit by a floodlight. Did you say there was someone pursuing you? asked Malcolm quietly. Yes, there's someone watching the bridge. Is there any other way across the river? There's my canoe. It's down this way, sir. Let's get off the terrace before anyone sees us. Lord Asriel went beside him across the grass and into the lean-to shelter where the canoe was kept. Ah, it's a proper canoe, said Lord Asriel, as if he'd been expecting a toy. Malcolm felt a little affronted on behalf of La Belle Sauvage, 
and said nothing as he turned her over and let her slip quietly down the grass and onto the water.